Cikgu Fas, on your mic please. Assalamualaikum and good morning to Ketua Penolong Pengarah Kanan Bahasa, Sektor Pembelajaran Jabatan Pendidikan Negeri Selangor, Puan Hajah Hanisah binti Muhammad Yusof, Cik Zahira binti Zakifli, State Language Officer, SIC Plus from all districts of Selangor, our panel of presenters and all attendees. Welcome to our third webinar session, Teaching in the New Normal. Sharing of best practices from home-based learning. I'm Nur Fazilah binti Othman from SK Puchung Perdana and I will be your moderator. Thank you everyone for making the time to join us today. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin, allow me to first share with all of you the objectives of this webinar. The objectives are to share the strategies used by Selangor English language teachers in carrying out home-based learning, HBL, or also known as PDPR, based on high to medium engagement of technology and low engagement to no technology used at all. Secondly, to celebrate the teachers who have worked hard to ensure teaching and learning continues at home. And lastly, to inspire other teachers to do HBL despite the challenges they faced. This is just what we need. The sharing of best practices from some of the teachers who have done it. As I have mentioned, this is the third from our six webinars happening throughout this week and also next week from 23 inspiring teachers of Selangor. Do check them out and mark down them mark them down in your calendar. All right, before we start, let me lay out a few housekeeping matters. First, the attendance link will be shared approximately 15 minutes before the end of the session. So do look out for that. Second, we love to hear from you during today's presentation. If you have any questions for our presenter, please feel free to send it through the chat box. The presenter will be answering questions at the end of their session. If, you, if we don't get to your questions during the webinar, we will be sure to follow up afterwards. And last, we would encourage you to share today's webinar with your social network. In this series of webinars, uh, teachers all across Selangor will be sharing some of the things they did during the home-based learning period. The sharing comes from various schools in Selangor. So, I hope you will stay tuned till the end of the session because we have a lot to benefit from these four amazing presenters who are from four different districts in Selangor. We have a presenter from Hulu Langat District, Sabak Burnham District, Petaling Perdana District, and also Gombak District. These presenters are also teaching in different types of school with different students' social background. This means we have four different settings and challenges, and the medium these teachers use are also of various means. So, without further ado, let me move on to introducing the first presenter for today. With us today is a well-known teacher in Selangor who is from SMK Taman Tasi, Dr. Ila Mange, Anak Perempuan Narina Sami, or better known as Dr. Ila. The title of her presentation today is Teaching English Through YouTube. So, over to you, Dr. Ila. Thank you, Fazila, for the introduction. Thank you, Fazila, for the introduction. So the first thing I think um, I'm going to just let you know that I am teaching during MCO, not at the moment. Um, at the moment, I'm teaching through Google Meet, but during the MCO, the last MCO, I was teaching English through YouTube. So for those of you interested in teaching your classes through YouTube, um, these are what you should uh, think of before you uh, start teaching through YouTube. 
All right. So what you need would be, first of all, you need to create a YouTube channel, right? Using your Gmail account. And um, you have to understand that if you want to go live on YouTube, you have to wait for 24 hours for YouTube to verify your account before you can go live. But for you to upload videos, it wouldn't be a problem. All right. Then you second, you need to have a broadcasting app or software or platform. Um, there are many. The one I'm mentioning here is XSplit Broadcaster, um, OBS Studio, or StreamYard like uh, we are using today. And you, StreamYard, you use 20 hours free per month. If you're using more, then you have to pay. There are many, many other app or software that you can use. So you have to decide what would be best for you. And you have to get familiarized with the app or software and platform. Uh, because I did download XSplit Broadcaster, OBS and StreamYard. Um, I found that I had trouble using uh, some of them. So I used only one that I'm comfortable with. Uh, this is my advice to those who want to use any um, broadcasting software. Do not try an app that you're not familiar with just because it's very popular with the masses. You need to be comfortable with any broadcasting app that you are using. The purpose is just to broadcast. So it doesn't matter if it's not familiar to other people because you are the one using the platform. All right, and then you also have to think of other software application that you want to use to teach. Either you want to upload it online, I mean live, or you want to do it offline. So you want to use PowerPoint, Word, Excel, Jamboard, Quizzes, there are many more, right? Other software that um, are using, I just recently discovered Canva is another one, okay? So the next step after you have a YouTube channel, after you are familiar with um, the broadcasting app that you want to use, then you, want, you know that what other software you want to use, then you have to ask yourself this question. Who are you as a teacher? Like for me, I like to have interactive or interaction, sorry, interactions with my audience. So when I teach, I love feedback or answers from my learners. So when I go live, the purpose is so that I get feedback or comment so that I can adjust my teaching towards what the learners need. I, I cannot just record one a video and put it on YouTube because I feel that I would not be able to help learners who might have problems in certain areas that I do not know what they have. So that's what I do. I like to go live and I like to do live interaction. I will stop whatever I'm teaching if there's question and answer the learners. Or when I'm teaching, I ask questions and learners answer. So in that way, I adjust and that's where differentiation comes in because I can plan something and if the learners that I have who are watching need more help, that's when I have to adjust what I'm teaching online, all right? So I also have to think of what language skills am I focusing and teaching? Because if you're teaching listening, speaking, reading, writing, uh, grammar and literature, there are different um, ways to teach, right? So you need to know what language skills you're focusing on. How are you going to teach these skills? So you have to look at the SOW, uh, which I always do and see what do I need to do, all right? So what are the best way or approaches to teach the language skill indicated in the learning standard. So if I want to teach speaking and they need to um, give their opinion, how would my online lesson help them give opinion? You have to understand YouTube have no audio. I can't listen to what my learners say. So basically they will have to type in the uh, comment box or chat box. And from there I can give, uh, give them feedback, right? So, but when they submit work, if it's a listen, uh, speaking subject, uh, they will have to um, submit an audio of them speaking, right? And then, this is what I'm talking about. Well, how would the task or exercise be submitted? So, what, how do you want the, the uh, learners who watch your live YouTube submit Google Form, submit the work, whether through Google Form, Google Docs, Slides, audio, all right, uh, I've also done quizzes. So do you need them to submit through quizzes, All right? So then only you can prepare your materials. Whatever, when you have answered all these questions, 
then only you prepare your materials before you can start going online or you want to record for uh, your session and then you upload later. Right, things to consider. When I first started this YouTube that I wanted to do, it was during our break in March when our Prime Minister said that um, school would be closed uh, for MCO. So my first thought was my pupils do not have uh, most of them do not cannot remember their Google Classroom. They didn't have. They have not entered their Google Classroom. They don't know their password. So how do I reach them? So I thought of doing YouTube because I feel that they can watch at any time if they want. They can attend. They don't have to give me excuses that they don't know. They don't have the password and they don't know their email. So when I did this during the one two weeks break before our our uh, lessons uh, started online i that's when i learned that okay youtube i need 24 hours and then i also learned about copyright because when i first did my youtube my youtube was shut down my my life was shut down within one or two minutes and i did again and it was shut down and i didn't understand why so i transferred my life to a facebook page that i have for learners and then later i also um, have a Facebook group with teachers that I share my YouTube later on. So I had to try, I had to move to a Facebook page and carry on the lesson. After the lessons that I done with Form 4 and Form 3 on that first day, I was researching what was wrong with me uh, going online during the, uh, the first lesson. That's when I realized it was because I was uh, displaying the textbook that are, uh, because you know, pupils didn't bring their textbook back before the MCO was announced. So they didn't have their textbook and I showed the textbook so that the pupils were able to follow my lesson. YouTube are very sensitive with copyright. Any textbook you show, music, that famous music that you want to use, pictures uh, that you use, you have to be careful about copyright. If it's copyrighted, YouTube is very sensitive, they will shut it down. So textbook, um, my solution was I had to retype everything on, uh, on PowerPoint, uh, part by part, and um, show it to the learners. That's why I guess extra work. Music, there is an audio library by YouTube. You can use the music. Um, some of the uh, creators would want you to acknowledge them. So I acknowledge actually all the music creators that I used to, uh, in my description when I go live. And then pictures, if you use pictures, use um, pictures like if you use PowerPoint, the pictures that they share with you that you can use online are all creative comments. So find creative comments um, license where you are allowed to use it in YouTube. That way you will not be legally implicated and uh, be sued by anyone, all right? And then timeline from preparation to submission of work. You need to think of how much time you will need to prepare. Um, I did one week, three lessons for Form 4, three lessons for Form uh, 3. So I had six PowerPoint to prepare, each for one hour. And I also had to prepare the task and exercise. Being MCO, so I was not going anywhere. I was sitting in front of my computer from morning till night to prepare all this for the learners, right? And you also have to think about accessibility to your learners. If you're doing live or you're doing a, a recorded broadcasting, okay, what about people who do not have access? They have no internet or they have problem with insufficient data. You have to think about all this when um, you want to go live on YouTube or you want to teach through YouTube, okay? Now I'm gonna give you an example of a lesson, all right? Um, okay, I use XSplit Broadcaster. Xplit Broadcaster is very famous with gamers actually, all right, but I'm not a gamer. And I this is my channel that I come in, okay, all right. So this is my YouTube channel. It didn't look nice like this beginning and then as I learned more and more by going to YouTube studio, okay, that's when I um, learned about how to do all this. This is a sample lesson, uh, which is on my PowerPoint when I was doing online. Right, and then um, the learning standards for this subject was writing for this one and the complementary skill was reading. So I have to think how I'm gonna teach them to summarize and how are they going to understand 
the main points, okay? So the objective was this. This was the objective shown to the learners. The learners didn't see the learning standards, but they saw the objectives. And this is the most important thing that I showed them. All right, success criteria, so that they know what they need to achieve at the end of the life lesson. Right, if they get to do this, my lesson is successful. All right, so um, this is the writing task that they have to do, okay? And they had to submit that the work through WhatsApp or Google Classroom. And I'm telling, giving them information on how to do the writing test. This is from the textbook Full Blast, right? And sorry, um, close up form three. Okay, so I use the same um, work. I put it in Google Classroom for those who have access in Google Classroom. You can see that it was 13 April, but I give them nearly three weeks to finish their work because I had to think about them, whether they are able to have access. Because I know uh, certain teachers asked straight away within 24 hours for work. Um, that is, uh, for me, I feel it's very unfair for the learners who have problems with internet, all right? Um, so I'm just going to give you this, is the analysis of this lesson only. I'm not talking about all my YouTube lesson, only this particular lesson with my form three. I have 21 learners in this class. When during live, I have five, but I do not have five audience for your information. I had many audience who were from different schools. So I catered for audience from different schools, but my own learners, only five came online. Um, after live, eight watched it after the live, that means the recorded version. But the total number of views that my video had is 1,497 because there were many viewers from different school and also different from three learners from my own school taught by my other English teachers. Uh, my other English teachers use my uh, recorded or uh, my live uh, YouTube um, for their learners to learn, okay? Um, so during MCO, only 10 completed the work. And then when I come back to school, I make them. You see, the thing was, I didn't revise my lesson. I make them go and watch the YouTube and complete it um, when they came back. All right, so if they had problems, they can PM me, ask me questions. And only one student until today did not complete the work for this lesson. All right, so um, if you have any questions, I would love to answer uh, your question. Any questions? Okay. Uh, interesting activity, Dr. Ila. Thank you for sharing it with us. So, no, if you have any questions, do ask. Type it in the chat box and I'll address to your, our presenter here. All right, while waiting for the questions, um, Dr. Ila, uh, how, may I know, how do you do PBD for your students who watch the YouTube uh, after the live YouTube? You said you made them to watch it after they come back, right? So how do you do the PBD for your students? Okay, um, PBD after live is quite difficult. So usually what I do is my learners are told to go through it and they ask questions. Now, if they ask questions, that's where I know um, what they understand and don't understand. But if they don't ask questions, it's their in product that I look and see how well they have done. If they have prob problems with their in product, that's when I will have a, a talk with them and tell them what they should and shouldn't do. So that's how I do my PBD. I cannot do it like on the spot. It's like after and give comments to them and help them. That's what I do. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, Dr. Ila, there's a question from the audience by P. Shovna Menon. Uh, Dr. Ila, have you tried recording your lessons and sending them to your students? All right, a good question. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Shoba. Um, the thing is, um, only in Telegram, I think you can have um, uh, videos that you, no, no matter how large you can share. Um, the problem with my learners in, in the area that I am is they having not enough data so even if I send them the video, 
um, they would say that they do not have enough data to download it and watch it. So I actually don't stress my learners during MCO to really go through this thing. I waited until school opened to uh, make them go through it. Okay, so right now, like right now, since um, we were back in school and and now we are back to our CMCO. What has happened is when I went back to school, I ensured all my learners have their G, uh, MOE Gmail. So now when I have my uh, life lessons, I don't like to ask students to do work, actually. I like to have interaction. Like I tell you, that's the kind of teacher I am. So I have like one time, I have five classes of four at one time. That's in the timetable. So I'm supposed to have like, about 100, I have attendance of 80 over in one Google Meet a lesson, okay? So because they have um, the, uh, the uh, thing, and I don't do now on YouTube is because I think everyone uh, in the schools are, are at a different stage. So it's quite difficult for me uh, to help everyone. And also a lot of work for me because uh, pre uh, preparing a lot of uh, uh, PowerPoint, it's, takes a lot of time. Okay. okay. I hope it helps uh, the answer uh, for Shoba. All right. So there we have it, Dr. Ila. So uh, thank you once again, Dr. Ila. All right. Thank you, everyone. Okay. All right. Now, let's move on to our second presenter. I would like to invite Ms. Faiza Ayuni Binti Jamil from SMK Bagantara with the title of her presentation, Making Things Work. Let's welcome Ms. Faiza. Okay, everyone. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Fazila. Okay, looking good today. So I'll start my uh, presentation right now. Okay. So, um, good morning, everyone. So, I am teacher Faiza Ayuni Binti Jamil from SNK Bagan Trap. Okay. So, today I'm going to share with you how I uh, make things work in, uh, in home based learning from my, uh, from my area, from my place. Okay. So, first, I'm going to start with the overview of my uh, sharing today. We will have to, we are going through the challenges of online learning, approaches that I make to counter the challenges, the online platforms that I choose to use, the focus skills, and some of my lessons, uh, my students' work, and also the conclusion of my presentation. Okay. Next, uh, this, I uh, just um, sharing the treasures we have in Sabah Benam, okay, the mesmerizing sun setting view of the paddy field, the palm oil plant, uh, plantation, and the yellow building there is my school, SMK Bagantrap. So this year is my fourth year serving there. Okay then. Okay, um, we we go to the first challenge. Okay, uh, it's the first challenge and the most um, I would say serious challenge on as uh, for people in Sabah Penang to have our home based learning, which is technical problem. Okay, internet connection, phone storage, and compatibility. Those are some of the problems that we have to go through in order to have our students receiving all the contents, all the learning online, okay? So uh, uh, these are some of the screenshots of my, of the WhatsApp text from my students saying that, okay, whenever I send any uh, videos or lessons to them, some of the students will text me and then uh, say all kinds of problems. Okay, for example, uh, there was once where I sent a video to my student early in the morning at 8.30 a.m. and uh, at 12.30 p.m. in the afternoon, student texted me and saying that she hasn't finished downloading the video. Okay, so that is quite uh, troublesome for us. And also, things will get worse when the students, they um, have some, maybe the phones they are using, the models are not compatible with the apps that the teachers are using. So that is one of the things that the teachers should consider. Okay, next, the challenges, the language barrier. Okay, so SMK Bagantrap or uh, Sabunam in general, we are from rural area where the, the attitude towards the towards English language could be um, could be crucial. Okay, some, some of the students, 
they are not confident enough to use the language when it comes to learning english they um shut they totally shut down they just don't want to listen to the teachers and if we are having the face to face interaction with them things will get easier because we can you know have like more uh, give some inspiring words to them like making things comfortable to them but with, when it's online and we can't interact directly with them so it is quite it is a challenge for for us as well and also the understanding of the task okay so in class sometimes when we give the instruction in the beginning of the lesson when we have reached the le middle of the lesson there will be students asking a teacher what page teacher uh what 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 do you ask me to do okay so sometimes the things like that it's more challenging when we don't have the live interaction with the students okay then uh, the third challenge is uh, the personal problem the some of the uh, family problems maybe some of the parents I, i'm not gener uh, generalizing okay, some of the parents they might have not understood the importance of following the timetable fixed by the uh, by the school but for to make their their kids sit down and follow all the lessons okay some of the people some of my kids they are sharing gadgets with their uh, siblings with their sisters with their brothers so they can't really follow my lesson in the morning so when and then when they get the phone at night they will then they will have the uh time to follow the lesson or to finish whatever task they are given and some of my students they have to work okay so there was once i tried to call my uh, my kid okay and then he was in the palm palm plantation and the teacher kebun kebun he said so i i really need to uh, to do some uh, speaking assessment with the person so instead of waiting for uh, for him to have a whatsapp video call with me i just straight over uh, straight away asked the question and then he was trying his best to talk to me in english okay so actually i am not uh, being so pessimistic i i'm not I don't intend to like put the highlights on the challenges and just giving you guys these some insights on the challenges that shape the approaches that I make for my students. Okay, so one of the approaches that I try my best to have is the clear instructions and sufficient guide. So whenever I assign any lesson to my students, I make sure that I have the step by step instruction. Uh, instruction. Okay, as you can see on the screen. Okay, I will tell them what uh, what are the things that they must have with them. Okay, what they have to do. I'll make sure that they have the attend they have tick on the attendance list so I know who I am speaking to. Okay, the link. And I think it's better for us teachers to have everything combined together in only one instruction. If not, the students will keep asking, teacher, what link? Teacher, what do we have to have? What do you have to have? Teacher, what do you have to do? Okay. Then okay. Uh this example of the uh, assignments, okay. Then, uh, whenever I ask my students to uh, do something, I will try my best to provide an instruction. Okay, so this is the example. Okay, I'm sorry, the, the video is not playing. Okay, okay, this is uh, merely a screen a screen recording of how to resend me the picture and underline the or circle the 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 answers given. Okay. Next, uh, this is my second approach that is to vary the task and consider all the necessary stimuli that my students got to have. As we know, the, the students, the kids we have, they have the multiple intelligence. Some are 10 and some students, they tend to speak. Some students are better in writing. Okay, so I try to vary the expected responses with them with, uh, then with the way of varying my uh, task. For example, for my, for my less proficient students, I ask them, I have them to describe some fancy pictures from the google and then uh, i give them a complete guide on for example this is one of my lesson i ask them to describe the fancy the this picture of spider there with his beautiful wife okay with the adjective okay then uh, another lesson another lesson i have my students to use whatever they have at home okay to and put them together setting up all, all the things together and snap a picture of them and to describe their position with the prepositions and these are uh, these are the lessons that i use with my less proficient students because they, i just don't want to scare them with all the online quizzes with the online essay assignments okay 
And I also have the chit chat spots, a spot chit chat with my kids because I want uh, them, okay, for me, uh, when we have the home based learning, it's more to using the language, not learning the language because um, we have to give them a break because the, uh, we, are, we are having the transition now, okay? Next, uh, the next approach is I always uh, have a follow up session with my students and I always show them their pace, okay? For example, uh, for each of my assignments, I will put a number on them. So assignment one, task one, task two, task three, so that it is it will be easier for them to track down the tasks that have not that they have not completed yet, the tasks they have completed, and I will update whether they have completed the task from time to time, so the students can see and control their own learning. And this is an example on the lab. Example, I whenever the students do not appear on the lesson, I will give them a call. Uh, asking a question, kenapa tak ada, why don't you participate in the lesson and from there I, I got to know many kinds of challenges and shortcomings they have to follow my lesson. Okay so, these are the online platforms that I choose to use. Okay, the, we have WhatsApp. The main platform is WhatsApp because uh, from, for my kids in my school, every class they have a WhatsApp group together with the teacher for all subjects. Okay, so we'll interact there. The, uh, we'll, we will interact there daily based on the given timetable, Telegram, so that we can uh, keep all the responses permanently for the sake of PBD. And then Google Meet. And also picture or video editing apps. And then uh, the skills that I will share in my sharing today is the underwriting and speaking. So before I design the lessons, okay, so I have a survey on the Google Meet and then I ask my students, what platform would you like to use when we are having our home-based learning? So some people, some of my kids, they say, I like Google Meet because we can discuss together. We will have the live interaction. Some of the kids, especially the, the girls, they like doing the posters because they want to show off their creativity. Okay. So the most important thing is we must do what our students like to have because the, they are the ones who will do the learning. Okay. And some, some, uh, one of my students say he likes Padlet. It's Padlet actually, not Padlet. Okay, I like Padlet because we can do when low connection. See, connection is a problem here. So we have to make sure that every app we use is convenient for them. Okay, next. Okay, so uh, these are some of the status I do with my kids to lower down the anxiety. You know, we have the anxiety all over the room when, we, when it comes to English learning. Okay, so these are one of the status. I will post the uh, uh, tongue twister and I will challenge my students to Say aloud the tongue twister in a normal pace and say it as fast as they can. Okay, let me show you. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think maybe we have problem with the audio. Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. I can I can show you the, the audio. Okay, one okay, the another starter is. Um, I will post a, a reading uh, passage and then they choose one word from the text. Okay. And then they will make uh, two sentences with the word and then they record themselves. They make a vo uh, voice note saying a lot of the sentences but they replace the word with the, the blah, blah, blah thing. So they will uh, post their recording and then the other students will uh, race to guess the word. Okay. So those are some of the starters that we can use to make students comfortable before they start the actual lesson, okay? Next, we have the, okay, what, this is one of my lessons that I have done with my students. It's a green selfie, okay? Um, in this lesson, I ask my students to take a selfie with any plants or fruits or vegetables they have at home, and the students will find the name of the plants, fruits, vegetables in English, and then I ask them to list down the benefits of the plants, and then they have to post the selfies and the information. Why do I do? Uh, why do I do this? Because um, as I said before, we are in a rural area. Everyone is planting their own vegetables and fruits at the at the backyard, so it is easy and convenient for my students. And then we don't have uh, to have strong con internet connection to do this. Okay, so this is my instruction. Okay, as I, I said before, I have the number on my side. This is assignment eleven. For unit two, this is for form three students, and then I have the step by step instruction. And also, uh, whatever I ask my students to do, I will do it first. This is to show that um, 
everything is possible to be done. Okay, maybe I, some of the students say, oh, teacher, I am shy to take selfie. So I, I can convince them by doing the thing that I ask on my own. So they say, oh, teacher pun malu, tapi I, I, do, I still do it for you guys. Okay, so this is the, the selfie with the plants. Okay, next. Okay, this is my students' work. So they did uh, this nah, a nice looking girl. She took some selfies with the plants that she has. Around the around the house, and then she listed down all the benefits of the trees. Okay, next, um, I tried to implement a real life situation, the real life elements in our in our lessons. As we know, we are we are not allowed to go out. So the online businesses they are coming, they are growing. Okay, they are growing so fast. So I have my students to pretend they have, they are on are doing an online business. So they have to take pictures of their products. They have to produce an advertisement on the social media to promote whatever they are selling. And um, my kids, they, they, they prefer to focus more on the on food. Because in Sabah Penam, we have lots of delicious food, okay? So I do this to encourage them to use real life elements. Uh, and I encourage them to use uh, family terms like COD, uh, online businesses, promoting. Okay, then the purpose is so that I can make my students to use the adjectives and then making persuasive uh, this discourse okay to make students to feel convinced to buy the products so what they have to do is to post the advertisement with the pictures and descriptions so again the instructions step by step and also sample advertisement i am not selling this sugarcane juice okay for information this is for the sake of making a sample okay so i post uh, i posted the sample advertisement for my students to understand or to comprehend the task better then this is my students' work. We have uh, delicious pizza there. We have satay. We have sagu gula melaka. And my kids uh, were having fun editing all the posters. Okay, and we, uh, I kept interacting with them, showing them what what term they should have, what term they should uh, include in their promotion. Okay, next. And then okay, this lesson is a follow up for the previous lesson. So, um, oh yeah, when I was doing the the COD business uh, task. Some of this, some of my students, they they were actually doing the actual business, okay. So they they gave me their real uh, advertisement. So I made a real order. The real food came to my door, and I get fed for real. So it's all in their fault, okay. It's all their fault, okay. So this is a follow up for the uh, COD business uh, pass. I have my students to pretend that they have bought the product of their classmates. I put them in pair. Then they have to provide two different kinds of negative feedbacks in the proper words or the harsh words because we have to prepare our students for the harsh words out, uh, harsh world out there. So I remind my students not to use uh, to, not to use cursive words. So they have to refer to the list of pairing, and then uh, they will post the all the feedbacks made, and then they attach their partners' post and post the feedbacks. There. Then there is the uh, example of the feedback they gave. Okay, so we have the the proper one and the I would say the root one and then I will ask my students how do you how did you feel how do you feel when you when you have customers giving bad comments root comments to your product so I will I will uh, I said to my students what you give you get back so if you want uh, your people the people around you to be good to you so be good to the people around you first okay some moral lesson there then this is how I give the feedback to their works I compile all the responses on the words or WPS. I print out all the responses for the sake of PBD. Again, we need to have the hard copy, um, uh, hard copy response for the students. And then I will mark and give necessary remarks there. And then I take the, the uh, snap picture of the feedback again made and then I share it to them. Then the same together with this. This is the comments. Okay, and peer coaching. This is also the follow-up to the previous uh, task. So they have read through their partner's corrected words. So I, I made them try to comprehend the errors and come up with the correction. Again, I put them into pairs. And then I will have, I, I ask them to have a Google Meet session with their partner to explain their partner's errors and also provide the corrections to their partner. And then we have the Google. Before, beforehand, I, will, uh, I had a Google Meet session with all of them. To demonstrate on how to give the, pro the feedbacks on the correct uh, on the errors and also how to provide the correction. Okay, so again, my instruction. 
the corrected writing and also demonstration see in the chat box in the chat box we have uh, i made them repeating the same sentence structure i uh, i showed them how to use um verb with ing after we have the by the word by okay this is the peer coaching lesson i have my advanced lesson uh, advanced learner explaining errors for the less proficient uh, kid okay so i have this uh, i have uh, badrol to explain uh, to for me the errors because teachers we know our students and we know who uh, who can uh, who can guide their peers so that is why i have this peer coaching uh, session again to make it accessible for all students to make it comfortable for students rather than having all the feedback come from me and then i have the backup plan always have the backup plan for you, for your students in case we don't have we are struggling with the connection again so some of my students they can have the google meet so i have a session of whatsapp video call with them doing the same thing peer coaching then um i then i saw when i go when i go through all the lessons done by the teachers in the in the uh, on the facebook or in the portal or in the whatsapp group i saw some of the i saw some of the teachers they make their students making a video of themselves so i i i so why don't I challenge my students to make this to have the same thing, okay, to record themselves? Because when I was in their position, when I was in my secondary secondary school, to speak in English and to record myself speak using the English language would be a nightmare, okay. So, but I would I I I I want to shrink the the gap, okay, between uh, my students and the students out there. So I challenge myself to have this task with them. So these are the questions you see in on the textbook, the speaking task on the textbook. So the student, so the student, uh, the students, they record themselves answering the question, and then I ask them to edit a video of their answers and the questions and publish the video in the WhatsApp group or in the Telegram group. Okay, so I edit the question into the in the form of pictures, so it will be easier for them to include in the video, and then I give them the instruction. Okay, sorry, I can I cannot play the video. Instruction is also done in a in the in the form of video, and I give I give them a simple video of me doing the task on my own. Okay, then these are all my students' works. I, I I am really sorry. The see what I said before. We are struggling with the connection here. Okay, I was planning to show is to show you the 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 videos of my students doing the task. Okay, so it. Turned out that I was totally wrong. I was expect I was expecting that my students will just ignore my my uh, task because I in class when we are interacting uh, live, some of them they are very shy. They are very scared of using the language in front of their friends. All the kinds of excuses are there. So turned out that some of the students that have been drowning, they have been drowning in maybe mobile games, they resurfaced and they took part in the lesson. They made a video of themselves. Okay, as you can see on the screen, I have recorded the number of responses because uh, this is what I do. But I, this is what I did to make sure that all the students are responding. So uh, I'm focusing on my class for Rising People. There are 28 students in the class. So when I have quizzes, written test, and Padlet, not everyone uh, take part in the lesson. But when I have a video task, turn out that they have the enough courage to video them to make a video of themselves answering to their task so um i have another lesson okay to have them um doing a whatsapp video call this is for an article writing doing a whatsapp video call and then they will have to discuss main points and ask them to make a screenshot to have a screenshot of the video calls because i i, I have figured out that whenever the task requires them to show their face they will respond well so I asked them to post the screenshot of the, their face during the WhatsApp video call and to post the points discussed. Okay, so reaching the end of my sharing. Okay, this is uh, my 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 attempt to share my whatever I am doing with my kids, with the teachers out there to help my my colleagues maybe. So I have uh, my Telegram group. Okay, and then uh, there are teachers, there are my ex colleagues from IUM and also the teachers, the other teachers from other schools in Sabah Benam. So I posted all I post all my all my the pictures, the instructions, and also I post my step-by-step -step instruction there so the other teachers can just copy and paste the instruction and straight away they can have the lesson with their kids. 
Okay, so as I said before, um, online lesson could be quite challenging for us. So these are some of my colleagues doing whatever they can, doing whatever they uh, they uh, they are capable of to uh, they, they are capable of to make students get the lesson. So these are some of the approaches they use. They leave the hard copy of the assignments and then they also go to the students' house to submit or to send the task. Okay, so in conclusion, actually teachers. Um, there is no right or wrong in doing this home-based learning, I think, because this, this home-based learning is a road few have taken. So teachers should be given space and a, enough guide on how to have an effective lesson with the students. And also, um, while I keep trying to discover effective and convenient apps to use with my students, because I can't change whatever is whatever which is the inevitable problems like the internet connection, so I just will I just use whatever I have, whatever around me, okay, uh, to make uh, to make the effective lessons. And all I can offer for my students is my my passion and also my patience to make things work. So that is all from me. Get back to you, Miss Fazila. Thank you. Wow, very good, uh, Miss Faiza. A lot of uh, things that we can do actually, because you, now we know that we can make things work, right? We, we, despite the CMCO, so learning can still take place although we are not at school. And some there are a lot of uh, awesome ideas from you. Congratulations on that. Thank you. All right. So, um, just um, so uh, audience, if you have any questions, you can ask our presenter here. So, while waiting for the question, um, can I ask you something, uh, Miss Faiza? So, um, how do you apply differentiation when you carry out home-based learning, and mm -hmm. when you give out tasks to your students? Okay. So, differentiation it 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 is about um, cater to the needs of the students because every. Uh, Different students, they have different needs. So actually, the home-based learning is a blessing in disguise for me because I now I'm having my advanced students to provide the materials for me. For example, I ask my students from the advanced classes to provide us, uh, to come up with notes and then I use the same notes because for the advanced classes, for example, in doing writing tasks, I would just give them the topics and they straight away they can do the task on their own. Then... The notes on the content, I use the notes on the contents and I give them to my uh, the classes with the less proficiency so that I have the students, I have provided uh, the different kind of uh, guide for each student. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a blessing actually because um, we can recycle all the materials we have, we can recycle all the responses we have in terms of video. For example, I have the videos of my students answering to the question. So I send the videos. To the less proficient classes, they can watch the videos and they can um, have um, lots of stimuli to make them feel courageous to take the challenge to make their own video. Okay, so yeah, so it is possible to do differentiation, right? When you yes. are when you carry out home-based learning. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is very possible. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Miss Faiza. All right, so next, allow me to introduce to you the third presenter for today, teacher Michelle Lim Pek Sim. The title of her presentation is Bridging the Gap with 3S, Simple, Sensible, Straightforward Tools. So the floor is all yours, teacher Michelle. All right, thank you, Ms. Fazila. Good morning, everyone. Okay, now uh, you can see my title today, okay? Bridging the Gap with 3S Tools. So my name is Michelle Lim Sim. I'm from College Tingkatan Enam Pujong. And probably you will be wondering uh, why a Form 6 teacher, a Muet teacher, is presenting her, 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 sorry, shall I say her tools, okay? Because I believe that we are language skill teachers. So be it primary, secondary, or even from six, we actually teach the skill in order for, for our 
students to be independent learner, to be effective, uh, to be effective teacher, effective learner of the language. Okay. All right. Now, uh, uh, let me start with my. Okay, I'm going to give an overview. Okay of what my presentation today, all right? So, okay, first thing I'm going to talk about the tree lesson, okay? So now the tree lesson uh, where I'm going to identify the gap, okay, then I'm going to talk about the lesson, how I bridge the gap between online and offline, okay? And then I'm going to talk about well, feedback. Yeah, just, yeah, sorry, well, yes. Well, I'm not very clear. Okay, sorry, eh? Okay, uh, now it's better. How is it now? Is it okay? Ah, uh, yes, it is. Is it okay? Yeah. All right, then I, I use without the mic. Okay, uh, yes, better. all right. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, I think basically it's the same thing as what we are doing, you know, as language teachers. So I'm going to go with it and how uh, I go along. Uh, probably this is just a sharing of what I've been doing in secondary school because the first phase of CMC or I was teaching in secondary Secondary school, which is Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Bandar Pucung Jaya. Yeah. And then uh, this second CMCO, I was in college in Gatan Enam Pucong. So I actually use the same tools which I apply in secondary school and to teach my form 6 student. Okay. So today, uh, what got me into, you know, when we have this uh, home based learning, right? The first thing when I do with my lesson, okay, I was thinking that, okay, I need to prepare a lesson which is simple. We are able to reach my students offline and online. Probably will be thinking, you know, you're teaching from six. They are so independent. Probably you won't have any problems. Well, actually, we do have a set of problems. Okay, I do have from six students who are at A2 level. Okay, we, they are below the average. And of course, I have these those high flyers. But the big question is, how am I going to reach out my students offline and online? You know, I do not want to prepare a two sets of lesson where I need to cater to two different communities. So I have to prepare something which is simple, flexible, which is easy for me to reach out to my students and I'm able to move on together. All right. So today my focus will be on uh, listening and reading. All right. Now before that, let me go into my pre-lesson. Okay. Now for my pre-lesson, of course, because we want to bring in students, you know, you want to engage them into your lesson. You want to prepare a schema before you start your actual lesson. So I bring in pictures. So as you can see, teachers, pictures are easily, you can get it even from the uh, internet, you know, Google images, like what Dr. Ila has mentioned, of course, certain things that you need to get the rights. Okay, just to brainstorm, you know, and then I use word wall, which you can also get it, okay, where I do for my, my reading or writing, you know, for my pre-lesson, and I bring in real life photos. So it actually, sparks my students' attention, you know, they were thinking like, teacher, what is that? Why? You know, and then at the same time, I also ask my students, what do you think we're going to do today? Okay, so this is my pre-lesson. I also bring in uh, YouTube videos. Okay, uh, this was done two days ago when I did reading class with my form six, you know, so I brought in YouTube about Napoleon Bonaparte because of history. You know, sometimes history can be boring. So this is an animation. So my students, actually, they, they, they like it and they enjoy it. You say, teacher, this is very nice, okay? And I also bring in a Facebook video, okay? And I talk about the topic when I talk about environment, but I do it in another way. And, and actually, I did a project with my student, you know, with, uh, combining fashion and environment. Later, I'll show you how I do it, okay, during this MCO time, CMCO time. Okay, now let's go into the lesson. Once your students are there, okay? All right, now I'm going to go into listening. Of course, the listening, I will use a listening text. Now, this listening text, I got it from the, the National Geographic where I'm a subscriber, okay, because I subscribe to their videos. So they give me the autonomy to use their videos during my lesson. Now, in for a listening lesson, as you can see there, it is a 4 minute and 23 seconds. Do I play the whole video? No. What I do, I do in chunks. So I play the first two minutes and then I ask my student, can you please list out? three things about this person okay then uh then they'll be like telling me teacher i think i uh, cannot teach 
can you please play back? Uh, we didn't hear, you know. I can't, I can't hear, you know. Then after that, then they asked me to play back. Then I had to play back again. Okay, then I move on with my listening. Now, the thing that I like about uh, videos from National Geographic, because I'm able to control the, the speed, because I am doing a listening task. Okay? So, the my students are able to listen well, okay, according to what they need to listen in order for me to continue my lesson. All right? Okay. So, with that, then, of course, I give activities to my students where I use Jamboard. Okay, as you can see, just I think you're familiarized with Jamboard, where my students, you know, this is the come where the inferencing part, where I want to see whether the students understood what they have listened, and are they able to achieve my objective of the lesson of the day. Okay, so I had Jamboard, and you can see I, I asked the students to write their name. Okay, to write their name. So they are able to see how are their responses and are able to give my feedback on the spot, right? So this is another way of listening comprehension. So instead of me preparing questions and they answer, I do the other way around. Why not you ask this for me three questions that you would ask about Mr. Lu? Because the whole video earlier was about Mr. Lu, about his Chinese art. So in a way, I'm looking, you know, I want to see whether the students understood what they are supposed to do, whether I'm able to achieve my objective. This is also a feedback. All right. So now, now the next thing you may ask, okay, how about my offline students? How do I reach them? Okay, because I'm doing online, I'm able to give my feedback on the spot. How about students who do not attend my class? Because if you can see my students, uh, they have their own problems, with, right? Uh, because they are from six, right? They are 18, 19, and some of them, they are working. They are unable to join my class or due to internet problem. Okay, the same thing. And then after that, um, you know, because you have to do housework and this and such. So what I did was I prepare my slides according to uh, I prepare my slides, which is in a very simple way. Okay, online and offline, my students get the same exact slides. As you can see in my slides. I put in very minimal instruction for them to do. The reason is that so that my students who are offline, they are able to explore on their own and do self-study. Okay, what is the difference between offline and on online is that online I give immediate feedback. You see, when I give the task to the students, actually I allow them to do their own. I'll be keeping quiet. The only thing is that, you know, somehow rather along the way where I find, hey, this is not right. That's how I give my feedback. But offline, the students, they will do their work. I will only give in the feedback after they have completed their work. Okay, so this is the one. So you can see my slides actually. And one more thing is that I always prepare plan B. Plan B meaning because you talk in terms of listening, the students may have a problem like teacher, okay, not like, you know, internet problem and, uh, and such. Okay. And then, uh, so what I do is I always prepare my, my materials in a folder in Telegram. Before my lesson, I always prepare. So the moment my students say, teacher, uh, uh, the teacher, then I say, they say, uh, teacher, problem I cannot. So what I do is I just forward to them all the, uh, all the, the audio or whatever through WhatsApp. Okay? All right. So now let's say students who do not attend my class, what I do is, is that yeah, they write their work on the paper and they upload in Google Drive. So I prepare a Google Drive for them because my students, my lower six, this is my lower six class, they do not have Google Classroom because they came in in July, okay? And then when you ask them to set up in Google Classroom, it, it, it will, there were a lot of problems because they forget their ID and this and such. So, and then the moment we want to start, we are going to CMCO. So what I, I did was I had a Google Drive with them and they upload all their work and from there, able to keep track so you have the offline and online both working at the same pace same time okay all right now another way is of course i think this is the one that teachers has been using you know this is a very normal way i prepare google form for them of course i give them the audio and then where i have problem a teacher i cannot open the file how are huh? all right so after 
that, what I do is I prepare the uh, word form, okay, and then I forwarded it to my student, and then my students are able to complete it at their own time. Okay, so it's, it works both ways. It's online and offline. So I use the easiest, the simplest, and the straightforward method, okay, for my teacher, for, sorry, for my students to be able to complete their tasks. All right, okay. Then after that, of course, this is one way where I do a feedback with them during my class. So I will print out their answers, okay, and then I ask them to see, okay, now you see your answers and the answer that is required. What is the mistake? Okay, so then that's how we go about it with the feedback. So that's why I find that uh, feedback is very, very important for me in order for me to prepare my next lesson. Right? Okay, now let's move on to reading. So what I do with reading is the same thing. Now, reading, I don't bring in the whole entire passage, but I bring it in paragraph form. Okay, in paragraph form, this is what in my, this is exactly is what in my PowerPoint slides for my student. Same thing, I teachers offline and online, I prepare the same thing. Okay, now for this, I use whiteboard FI. Why I use whiteboard FI? Teachers, I think you can go to YouTube and discover what is whiteboard FI. I like this because students, they will have their own board. Okay, what I do is I will just project, uh, I will just project the passage and the students answer, uh, they have to answer at their own board. Meaning to say that the students are able to see each other's board compared to, uh, this is the answer, this is the one that the students will see. Okay, so if you can see, everyone has their own board. So I just project the passage to them and they will answer. This is my upper six. Okay, this is my upper six. All right. Rather than Jamboard, if you see Jamboard, the students are actually able to copy the answer. All right, but if I were to use whiteboard, the students are unable to see their friend's answer. So because this is upper six and they are sitting for their move at, okay, so uh, I have to do an assessment with them off and on, okay? This is on reading. Now, uh, same thing, online and offline, the students will answer and then they will also upload. So my upper six, they also have their own Google Drive with me, so they will upload their exercises, the same thing. Okay, so teacher, this is just a sharing. I think you're able to use it even in your secondary school with your form one or two form, up to form five, okay? It depends on the level of your students. All right, now, this is my lower six. Okay, same thing I did reading with them. And as you can see, this is actually the slides that I give to my students, all right? Okay, so if you can see, I always give them one passage first. I do not give them the whole chunk, okay? Because you're doing online. And at the same time, I have to think that of my offline students, students who do not attend my class, they must be able to complete my task. So this was, what I did was, I used Creately. Okay, as you can see, teachers, you know, you can see that the students, they are doing my class. Okay. Here and there. It's the same thing as Jamboard. Okay, but the product was like that. So, what I'm trying to tell you is that sometimes online teaching can be disastrous. So, actually, it was a failure because the moment when I see your product, I get confused my student gets confused, you know that I say, okay, probably this is not a suitable tool. So teachers, what I'm trying to share here it is that, you know, it's okay to make mistakes because it is from mistakes we are able to move forward to prepare a better, to use a better tool. So probably this is not a good tool for me to use. So what I did was, okay, so I used another passage which is from National Geographic, okay, Reading Explorer. Okay, because uh, for Form 6, Okay, because they're also into CF, FCFR, all right, uh, movement. Okay, so they are they're also using a new syllabus, so I need to get books, you know, for, for this level, so it get a B2 level. So I bring in, same thing, passages. If you can see in my slides, these are also the same slides that I give to my student offline and online. So actually, what I do is I always prepare simple things. I go step by step. If you can see one passage, comes with few questions. 
All right. So you start with application, with knowledge, then you go to analyzing, inferencing. Okay. And I used I used a new uh, tried a new app. This is called Coggle. Okay, Coggle, where you're able to come up with your own mind map. So I actually before I before I uh, give it to my students, I always try first whether is it uh, uh, off. Line online, okay. I tried first Coggle and voila. Okay, so my students actually be able to do it. Okay, so this is the example that my student used Coggle and they come up with the mind map about Napoleon Bonaparte because uh, from, from there I want to see whether are they able to get the main ideas and the specific details of what they have read. Okay, and of course, some students they, they were offline. Okay, so they were able to complete my task written and then they upload in the Google. And this, this is one of my students where he used a mobile handphone to do it. Okay. And you can see, actually, uh, students, they are very creative. You know, and students tell me, teacher, can I use another app? I said, why not? Okay, the thing is that I want to see your mind map. And my student used various uh, apps and they completed my work. Do we allow? Yes. Why not? Okay, we want the students to have, have to explore, to have their own autonomy of their own study of their own learning this is what we want right at the end of their schooling all right okay now another way another lesson which i did was i got it uh, passages from lingua house i think teachers you can even get it because lingua house is it follows the level of the students that we are teaching as now we will go into cfr okay so what i did was same thing okay i chose a passage this is a week lesson and I chose a passage because uh, lingua house it serves uh, you know the level of my students so it's a b1 and b2 so it was a passage about sustainable fashion okay so this is their worksheet but of course I, I did not use the entire I have to I have to you know uh, think of a way to make it simple straightforward and sensible for my students to be able to complete the task the content and your language objectives must match. Okay, when they have learned the content, okay, from the content, we also teach them the language because that's what we want. We want our students to be independent user of the language. Okay, so this is what I did. So, of course, the same thing, I break it into chunks. Okay, break it into chunks. Uh, sorry, break it into passages. Okay, of course, I did uh, exercises with them, so I don't, I do not want to go through with that. Okay. And then from reading with the task that they have completed, okay, with inferencing application and such, I bring it to a speaking task with the same text because I want to see whether the students are able to use the language. You really have the content. Now I'm going to use with the language. So I ask the students, why not you come up with one effective method to overcome wastage in the clothing industry? So actually I'm combining fashion with environment you no know, something which sparks the student because if let's say you talk about environment recycling reduce you know it's so boring so i said okay why not you know we do something different and of course because speaking i gave them speaking frames so it's very important for us teachers to teach our student when you give opinion these are the frames that you need to use actually okay so i give them a hit but when they do presentation you know when they Speak, then of course I will. I let them present. Then after that I will give my comments. I say, you know, you should actually doing this. You should actually do that. Okay. So uh, this is just a sharing teacher. So I'm sure you have many ideas. So what my students did, I was very impressed with them because they came up with poster. So from the poster, they actually use Canva. Okay. I think teachers, you have seen throughout the presentations by the teachers, they've been using Canva app. So my students i asked them why not you use canva and you try and see so they came up with posters and they were talk talking on it so you see if you can see uh students they even draw the poster they asked me teacher you can draw i said why not it's okay you know so when they presented so you know that's how i assess them you know this is the way that you need to do because for me i believe when you do a lesson let's say on reading only it doesn't stop there Actually, you can move forward and let the student explore to use the language together with the content that they have learned. All right. So at the end of the day, they say, okay, good. Because it helps them, you know, as they grow up to be able to 
be a good speaker. And you can see the students how they how they presented their posters, right? Okay. So now, yeah, whatever that we have done, they will upload in a Google Drive because it's easy for me to keep track of what they have done, and it's also good for them to know that they have completed my task because they can open and they can see. I say, hey, only 28 of you, where are the rest? Okay, now, back to uh, problems, challenges that I have in Form 6. We, I do have challenges. I think the Form 6 teachers, we do have challenges. Okay. okay, so these are some of the feedback that I get from my student teacher. I don't know how to upload. So I do not like to spin food, my, uh, spoon feed my students. What I do is I give them the video as, in the directly I tell why not you learn it on your own? After that, he said, okay, teacher, I really fixed. I know what to do. So this is the feedback that I gave to my students. And you can see, teacher, I can't use Coggle. So I said, it's all right. You use your paper and then you draw. You know, the thing is that we try to cater for the offline and the online. Okay, so that's why my lessons are always, I try to make it the simplest way, the most sensible and straightforward in order for for me to narrow the gap between you know, the lessons that I'm trying to teach them, okay, my objectives as well. Okay, and sometimes I have students telling me, teacher, I don't understand. All right, so can you please explain? So if you see my explanation in my WhatsApp, I give very simple, you know, I do not like to be long-winded with them because they are from six. You know, many times I tell my students, you know, even though I was teaching secondary, I was from four or from five, Tell them you are really young adults. Okay, so certain things you really need to explore and learn on your own. All right, because nothing comes easy in life. You have to learn the hard way. So, and one more thing is I always prepare samples for my student to do it. Okay, because I tell my students if I can do it, you can also do it. Okay, so it is a motivation for your students to actually go on to to, to complete the task that they are supposed to do. Okay, now talking. About about feedback okay how i give feedback is you can see i give different feedback to different uh, to different uh, level of students that i have in my class okay let's say for the average you can see i will give uh, a more a more in-depth answer but as for the good students i will also, i will usually ask them questions because i want them to think they are good you know i want them to think is that something Sometimes students, uh, they manja manja with you, you know, they want, want like, uh, they want you to give them straight away the answer, but I do not want that. You know, I want them to think, at the end of the day, we want them to be critical thinkers, okay, to be critical learners, able to think for themselves, to be independent learner, and to be independent user of the language, All right? Okay, so this is my feedback that I usually give, uh, let's say when they have completed their work, of course, I give them some time frame for them to complete my work because I'm thinking of the online and offline. Okay, so they need some time. So usually when I mark that, I will tell them, can you please go in and check your Padlet? This Padlet is for my writing when I do writing. Padlet is a very good tool. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, then after that, if you can see, if let's say the students have been doing a good job, I will praise. You know, people like praises. If they are good, say they are good. All right, if let's say sometimes my students which I find that they are not good usually I will pee at them you know I tell them I say hey, actually you know um, not so you know that kind of thing so because it's not nice for me to you know to just post it in the in the group you know and tell them you know, actually you're like that like that I find it's not a nice way so uh, that's why I say feedback is very very important for me as well as for my students so that the both of us we can go along together and move on to the next level Lesson. So be it CMCO or whether we are going back to school, we are actually on the same track together. Okay, we are not much far difference. So that's why, um, and coming to the end of my session, is that whether you are offline or online, I think we as teachers, we have to be very flexible and think of simple ways for us to plan our lessons, to carry out easily, and then, you know, it's like a win situation for my students as well as for us as teachers so that we can move along together All right so teachers everything in life teaches you a lesson yes actually i learned a lot from my students
students. You know, my students tell me, teacher, why not we use TikTok? I say, okay, then I need someone to teach me. So actually next week, we're going to have, have a TikTok lesson. My students is going to teach us actually. So you can have that kind of thing. The, the relationship between you and your students are actually very important, even for the week. Okay, so with that, thank you very much to uh, uh, Puan Haja Hanisa, Jade Zahira, and to everyone in the techni technician team and everyone for this uh, beautiful session. Thank you so much. I hope you have learned something. Okay, thank you very much. Back to you, Fazila. Thank you. All right, we surely learned something. Like for me, I learned about Coggle, white, Whiteboard Fi, and also Lingua House, right? And I'm sure the other viewers who, who uh, viewed this, they must have learned something from you, uh, Teacher Lim. So uh, before yeah. I continue, I would just like to apologize to the viewers just now because due to the heavy traffic on connectivity, the audio, the audio was not very clear. So on behalf of the presenter, we apologize for the issue. All right. Okay. So, um, I'm sure that's a lot that there are a lot that we can benefit from what um, Teacher Lim has shared. All right. But uh, I just want to ask. There's a question from um, um, one of the viewer. She asked. Okay. But maybe you can just um, explain briefly on how you share your Google Drive with your students. Oh, okay. Actually, my Google Drive is very simple. What I do is I just get email from them, especially Gmail, all right? Their Gmail or their Yes mail. And then I just set up a Google Drive with them. So I add them in so they are able to go in and off on time. So it's like a platform for them to submit and also a platform for me to submit my work. So it's like an interaction. Yeah, that's how I do that. Hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you once again, teacher, teacher Michelle. It's Welcome. very, very good. I mean, like we learn a lot. All right. So obviously it's very um, simple, sensible and straightforward tools. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. All right. So now we have come to our last presenter. So let us welcome Mr. Hassanul Abidin bin Yusuf with the title of his presentation, Enhancing vocabulary via Google Forms and Textbook. Uh, uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to all of you. Okay, first of all, uh, happy Friday. And I would like to wish a happy birthday to everybody's teacher who was born in November. Okay, um, let me open my screen first. Okay. Okay, uh, first and foremost, okay, uh, this is an honor to have this kind of opportunity to share something with everybody here. Uh, I hope that uh, what we are sharing here can give an idea or insight to everybody to make the learning at home more interesting and meaningful. Uh, and as you can see in the slide there, uh, I am Hassanul Abidi Bay Yusuf, uh, currently teaching in SMK Taman Selayang. And my topic today is enhancing vocabulary via Google Form and textbook, and among other exercises. Okay, now, um, why vocabulary? Okay, maybe some of us uh, ask this kind of question. Okay, why not uh, reading? Why not writing? Uh, why not LA, uh, speaking, listening, or even literature? Okay, this is my personal view, but before that, okay, uh, what is shown in the slides are actually taken from the DSKP Bahasa Inggris Form 3 and Form 4. And we can see that the importance of enhancing vo uh, pupils' vocabulary where they are going to apply the vocabulary in their life, in speaking, writing, and sometimes when uh, they will see the same vocabulary when they read and also listen to a conversation. Uh, indeed, it is very important for our pupils to enhance their vocabulary over time. Uh, from primary to secondary schools, from basic high frequency vocab to more sophisticated low frequency ones. This is actually the idea of learning and enhancing the vocabulary. Okay, next is 
Okay, these are the list of vocabulary for Form 3 and Form 4 taken from the DSKP. As we can see here, uh, there are a lot of vocabulary the student are expected to be able to apply. Uh, however, we do not have to worry because the pupils are not expected to learn the word from the word list by heart. Okay, they build up their personal vocabulary over time. Okay, now, uh, how do I enhance pupil vocabulary? Okay, one of the ways, okay, go ahead. one of the ways is by using the Google form. Okay, um, one, uh, okay, one of the good home-based learning platform for asynchronous learning where we cannot have face-to-face -face interaction with the pupils. Okay, moreover, uh, people have the ability to access information and demonstrate what they have learned at their own pace. And as teachers, we are notified whether the pupils have or haven't done or haven't carried out the task. Okay, to me, I don't care about the deadlines, even though I said in the Google form, as long as the pupils do it, and it is fine enough for me because the pupil might have their own constraint, constraint. Okay, in terms of data, uh, devices, or maybe even time. Okay, because we can see there are pupils who were marked as done late. Okay, if they do the quiz assignment, the, the Google form, after the deadline. Okay, to me, uh, it is okay. Okay, now, uh, these are the source of my Google form. Okay, taken from this book. Okay, uh, textbook and also workbooks. Okay, why textbook and workbook? Okay, the question is, why not? Okay, there are a lot of uh, vocabulary exercises for the pupils to do. And we make sure, we make sure that um, for the pupils to do it. And to me, I think what I can do is to optimize the usage for my pupils. I believe that all teachers have these books, okay, either we bought it or we borrowed it from the boss. In every unit, okay, of the book contains a lot of vocabulary exercises related to the topic. Okay, to me, besides giving the pupil do it as homework, why don't I make it more exciting? Okay, rewrite. Okay, what I do are uh, uh, rewriting the question, uh, copy and paste, cut and paste the exercises, uh, make some settings of the marks, uh, the rubric, okay, prepare three or four exercises, assign and schedule them in the GC. It means besides having homework in the exercise book uh, during the normal classroom, and then after that MCO, and then come after this, okay, now is the MCO, the people also have quiz assignment in the GC to enhance their vocabulary. Okay. Uh, these are some of the material I cut from all books to be used in the GC. And as you can see there, I use a snip and sketch application in the computer or laptop to do the cut and paste. Uh, this is the screenshot for my Form 4 GC classwork uh, for vocabulary assignment where I begin from February this year. Okay, from time to time, the vocabulary course assignment have increased and I do not know how many actually. Okay, this is another screenshot of my of one of my Form 3 GC uh, started in January this year. And for Form 3 vocabulary quiz assignment, uh, quiz assignment I also reuse them for the Form 4 pupils uh, GC where they can revise what they have learned in Form 3. Uh, however, I don't use Form 4 vocabulary quiz, assign uh, quiz assignment with the Form 4 uh, pupils because um, Form 3 pupils will learn them next year. Okay, uh, there are two types of quiz assignment we can assign to our pupils in the GC. Uh, firstly, quiz assignment where pupils can tap or can click the given option. And, okay, another one is an example of a quiz assignment where this time, people are required to write their answer. It is quite challenging, 
but an effective way to test pupils' understanding of the vocabulary. Okay, the frequency of the vocabulary quiz assignment I made for my pupil is uh, two quizzes every week. Okay, for the preparation. Okay, for the preparation, uh, it is actually 24-7. Uh, sometimes early in the morning, uh, 5 a.m., sometimes at night, 11 p.m., during the weekend, okay? You know, while watching Agent Ali or My Little Pony with my uh, children, okay? Or maybe sometimes after school while waiting to punch out. Okay, furthermore, uh, we can make a scheduling system in the GC where creating quiz assignment and then set when the quiz will be released to the classes. And lastly, re uh, reusing all the assignment for other classes. Okay, of course, uh, everything will have advantages and disadvantages. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, bukan. Uh, not uh, disadvantages, eh? uh, challenges. Okay, uh, this is where we can see uh, how people with constraints are able to do the exercises similar to what I have assigned to the uh, in the GC. And this is why you can see I very much depend on the textbook and workbook because each pupil has the textbook with them and they have no excuse to do the exercises we give them to do. Uh, but uh, for the workbook, since they do not have them, I could not ask more. I hope the vocabulary exercises I give is ample enough for the pupil to enhance their vocabulary. Okay, there's one thing that I need to uh, highlight here. Okay, during especially during this CMCO, no one is left behind. Okay, this is what my pengetua remind us teacher. Okay, since the school would not be open until the end of the school session this year, there will be some student who might left behind or even maybe doing nothing. Okay, due to this, we can return to not to say a new norm uh, using WhatsApp or SMS to our pupils' uh, parents' mobile phone or maybe our pupils' mobile phone and telling them which page they need to do and when they have to submit it. Uh, the pupil either PM or text me the answers or snap photos of their work. Okay, therefore, no one is left behind. Okay, as for the feedback, okay, uh, I check the answers given by my students, or oh, sorry, by my pupils, and then copy and paste their answer with the scores and the mark, either correct or incorrect. Uh, however, there are still people who did not respond, do nothing during the CMCO. And now at the moment, I'm thinking of going to their houses, but at the same time, actually worry due to the pandemic. But I tried uh, my best to do it. Okay, uh, for the feedback, uh, for the Google form, when I set the quiz assignment, the answers has already been set and that's why when the student tap the submit button, uh, they are redirected to another page where they can uh, straight away view their result for uh, of the quiz assignment, okay, by tapping the view score button. Not only the student can view the score, they can also know the correct answer for any mistake they made when answering the question, uh, when answering the quiz okay besides giving vocabulary quiz assignment there are some other activities uh, that can be done during the mco and cmco okay the first example is google meet and other quiz assignments based on the textbook and workbook okay for the pupils as you can see there okay shown in the slides okay uh, they are writing, they are reading, they are language awareness, literature, and actually for matching, they is also taken from the textbook that related to vocabulary. And lastly, for the essay marking, okay, this is what uh, my favorite is, okay, the, the pupil write them, okay, 
uh, take picture or write them using the Google form if they have uh, the gadget or the devices. And what I do is I print all the uh, essay and then mark them using the assessment scale for Form 3, for PT3 and also for the SPM. And then after that, snap the picture and return to the pupils. Uh, I think that's all for me. I think this is I think this is the quickest uh, presentation among all. Okay. Uh, I hope that I shared something beneficial to all of you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Abidin. It is a ben beneficial sharing because now we know and how to use the Google Form and you can actually uh, fully utilize uh, using the Google Form. All right. So, um, uh, viewers, if you have any questions to ask, uh, you can just type in the chat box. All right. So, um, uh, Mr. Abidin, uh, there's a question okay, from me. All right. So, um, is there any other way you would suggest to enhance the student's vocabulary? For example, any activity that teachers can do during this PMCO? Ah, okay. Mm, thank you for the question. Okay, there are actually some ways that I would like to suggest uh, in order to enhance the pupils' vocabulary during this CMCO. Okay, uh, the first one is uh, by practicing speaking, okay, and applying the vocabulary in their speaking. Okay, uh, people do not, have, do not have to worry about broken English, okay, because we also start with broken English because, and this is, I think, uh, people will know, practice makes perfect. Okay, and then for the second one, uh, we can always ask our pupil to build or to construct at least uh, three sentences uh, using the vocabulary. Okay, by using that, okay, why three sentences? Okay, uh, to me, three sentences is actually uh, good enough for them to remember the uh, vocabulary and maybe it's from time to time, okay, they keep remembering and use the or apply or practice the vocabulary that they know. Okay, and these are the ways, or these are the two ways that people can do during, uh, about to during the CMCO at home. Thank you very much, Chego. All right, thank you. But um, Mr. Abidin, there's another question here. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Lee Min Fei asks, how to check AC in Google Form? Okay, thank, uh, thank you, Cikgu Li Min Fei. Okay, uh, there, are, there are actually two ways for me to do or to check the essay in the Google Form. Firstly, I check from the Google Form uh, itself, which is you have to be in front of the computer in order to check it, okay? And then uh, in terms of the rubric, what I did is, what I do, sorry, what I do is I include all the uh, skill assessment Okay, that we get from the BPK, sorry, from the Lembaga Perpisaan, I put in the rubric. And then based on that, I check the students' uh, errors, I mark them, and I give a comment for the uh, essay, and then I click, 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 click on the marks. Okay, that's number one. But then because uh, due to tiring, because sometimes I do not have, uh, I, I'm not, I, what to say, I cannot really sit in front of the computer very much for a long time. So the second thing that I do is I print all the uh, AC. Okay. I bought uh, five, one box of four A4 papers. Okay. It's during the MCO. Okay. Last MCO. And then what I do is I use the papers, print them. Okay. And then uh, mark is uh, like what I, what we do for in terms of marking uh, students' papers. Okay, like what Cikgu Sweat Lim, uh, Lim Lam say, okay? I also do the same thing that uh, she does. Ah, yes. Okay. All right. So, um, thank you again, Mr. Abidin. Okay, you are welcome, Cikgu. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, the, link, the attendance link is already posted on the chat box. So, uh, do scroll up if you missed it. All right, so with that, we have come to the end of our webinar.
It's been an honor and privilege for me to be a moderator for today. Utmost appreciation to our panel of presenters, Dr. Ila, Ms. Faiza, Teacher Michelle, Mr. Abidin, and of course to all of our to all of our wonderful audience who have taken the time to join us today. We hope through this webinar you're able to take away a lot of useful information, input and ideas for the benefit of our students. Right. Thank you everyone once again for joining us. Please join us with our next session, which will be held next week on 24 November to 26 November. And for those who missed any of our webinar, don't worry, as you can find these webinars on the GPS YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like the channel. Till then, this is Fazila signing off. Have a good weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay well. Bye.